Welcome to the One Year Bible, October 3. The Old Testament reading, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1, through chapter 2, verse 30. These are the words of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, one of the priests from the town of Anathoth in the land of Benjamin. The Lord first gave messages to Jeremiah during the thirteenth year of the reign of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah. The Lord's messages continued throughout the reign of King Jehoiakim, Josiah's son, until the eleventh year of the reign of King Zedekiah, another of Josiah's sons. In August of that eleventh year, the people of Jerusalem were taken away as captives. The Lord gave me this message. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. O sovereign Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. The Lord replied, Don't say I'm too young, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth and said, Look, I have put my words in your mouth. Today I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must build up and plant. Then the Lord said to me, Look, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I replied, I see a branch from an almond tree. And the Lord said, That's right, and it means that I am watching, and I will certainly carry out all my plans. Then the Lord spoke to me again and asked, What do you see now? And I replied, I see a pot of boiling water spilling from the north. Yes, the Lord said, For terror from the north will boil out on the people of this land. Listen, I am calling the armies of the kingdoms of the north to come to Jerusalem. I, the Lord, have spoken. They will set their thrones at the gates of the city. They will attack its walls and all the other towns of Judah. I will pronounce judgment on my people for all their evil, for deserting me and burning incense to other gods. Yes, they worship idols made with their own hands. Get up and prepare for action. Go out and tell them everything I tell you to say. Do not be afraid of them, or I will make you look foolish in front of them. For see, today I have made you strong, like a fortified city that cannot be captured, like an iron pillar or a bronze wall. You will stand against the whole land, the kings, officials, priests, and people of Judah. They will fight you, but they will fail. For I am with you, and I will take care of you. I, the Lord, have spoken. The Lord gave me another message. He said, Go and shout this message to Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. I remember how eager you were to please me as a young bride long ago, how you loved me and followed me even through the barren wilderness. In those days Israel was holy to the Lord, the first of his children. All who harmed his people were declared guilty, and disaster fell on them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Listen to the word of the Lord, people of Jacob, all you families of Israel. This is what the Lord says. What did your ancestors find wrong with me that led them to stray so far from me? They worshipped worthless idols, only to become worthless themselves. They did not ask, Where is the Lord who brought us safely out of Egypt and led us through the barren wilderness, a land of deserts and pits, a land of drought and death, where no one lives or even travels? And when I brought you into a fruitful land to enjoy its bounty and goodness, You defiled my land and corrupted the possession I had promised you. The priests did not ask, Where is the Lord? 
Those who taught my word ignored me. The rulers turned against me, and the prophets spoke in the name of Baal, wasting their time on worthless idols. Therefore I will bring my case against you, says the Lord. I will even bring charges against your children's children in the years to come. Go west and look in the land of Cyprus. Go east and search through the land of Kedar. Has anyone ever heard of anything as strange as this? Has any nation ever traded its gods for new ones, even though they are not gods at all? Yet my people have exchanged their glorious God for worthless idols. The heavens are shocked at such a thing and shrink back in horror and dismay, says the Lord. For my people have done two evil things. They have abandoned me, the fountain of living water, and they have dug for themselves cracked cisterns that can hold no water at all. Why has Israel become a slave? Why has he been carried away as plunder? Strong lions have roared against him, and the land has been destroyed. The towns are now in ruins, and no one lives in them anymore. Egyptians marching from their cities of Memphis and Tophanes have destroyed Israel's glory and power. And you have brought this upon yourselves by rebelling against the Lord your God, even though he was leading you on the way. What have you gained by your alliances with Egypt and your covenants with Assyria? What good to you are the streams of the Nile or the waters of the Euphrates River? Your wickedness will bring its own punishment. Your turning from me will shame you. You will see what an evil, bitter thing it is to abandon the Lord your God and not to fear Him. I, the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies, have spoken. Long ago I broke the yoke that oppressed you and tore away the chains of your slavery. But still you said, I will not serve you. On every hill and under every green tree you have prostituted yourselves by bowing down to idols. But I was the one who planted you, choosing a vine of the purest stock, the very best. How did you grow into this corrupt, wild vine? No amount of soap or lye can make you clean. I still see the stain of your guilt. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. You say, that's not true. I haven't worshipped the images of Baal. But how can you say that? Go and look in any valley in the land. Face the awful sins you have done. You are like a restless female camel, desperately searching for a mate. You are like a wild donkey, sniffing the wind at mating time. Who can restrain her lust? Those who desire her don't need to search, for she goes running to them. When will you stop running? When will you stop panting after other gods? But you say, Save your breath. I'm in love with these foreign gods, and I can't stop loving them now. Israel is like a thief who feels shame only when he gets caught. They, their kings, officials, priests, and prophets are all alike in this. To an image carved from a piece of wood, they say, You are my father. To an idol chiseled from a block of stone, they say, You are my mother. They turn their backs on me. But in times of trouble, they cry out to me, Come and save us. But why not call on these gods you have made? When trouble comes, let them save you if they can. For you have as many gods as there are towns in Judah. Why do you accuse me of doing wrong? You are the ones who have rebelled, says the Lord. I have punished your children, but they did not respond to my discipline. You yourselves have killed your prophets as a lion kills its prey.
The New Testament reading, Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 23. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stay true to the Lord. I love you and long to see you, dear friends, for you are my joy and the crown I receive for my work. Now I appeal to Euodia and Syntyche, please, because you belong to the Lord, settle your disagreement. And I ask you, my true partner, to help these two women, for they worked hard with me in telling others the good news. They worked along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are written in the book of life. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. How I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you have always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing. Or with everything, I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Even so, you have done well to share with me in my present difficulty. As you know, you Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought you the good news and then traveled on from Macedonia. No other church did this. Even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent help more than once. I don't say this because I want a gift from you. Rather, I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. At the moment, I have all I need and more. I am generously supplied with the gifts you sent me with Epaphroditus, They are a sweet-smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. And this same God, who takes care of me, will supply all your needs from His glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Now all glory to God our Father forever and ever. Amen. Give my greetings to each of God's holy people, all who belong to Christ Jesus, The brothers who are with me send you their greetings, and all the rest of God's people send you greetings too, especially those in Caesar's household. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Psalm 75, verses 1 through 10. We thank you, O God. We give thanks because you are near. People everywhere tell of your wonderful deeds. God says, at the time I have planned, I will bring justice against the wicked. When the earth quakes and its people live in turmoil, I am the one who keeps its foundations firm. I warned the proud, stop your boasting. I told the wicked, don't raise your fists. Don't raise your fists in defiance at the heavens, or speak with such arrogance. For no one on earth, from east or west, or even from the wilderness, should raise a defiant fist. It is God alone who judges. He decides who will rise and who will fall. For the Lord holds a cup in His hand, 
that is full of foaming wine mixed with spices. He pours out the wine in judgment, and all the wicked must drink it, draining it to the dregs. But as for me, I will always proclaim what God has done. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob, for God says, I will break the strength of the wicked, but I will increase the power of the godly. Proverbs 24, verses 17 through 20. Don't rejoice when your enemies fall. Don't be happy when they stumble. For the Lord will be displeased with you and will turn his anger away from them. Don't fret because of evildoers. Don't envy the wicked. For evil people have no future. The light of the wicked will be snuffed out.